Hey everybody, welcome back to Chicago Reacts. My name is Michael, I'm an actor here in Chicago, and I am joined by Zach, also an actor here in Chicago, as hopefully you guys know by now. And if not, and you like this content today, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel. Yeah. Um, also, today we are gonna be reacting to something entirely new, which is always fun for us. Yes. We're taking a look at Space Station 13 review by, how did you say? Seth. Zine talk. Zine Let talk. us know if we're totally butchering that, and we'll do better next time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and again, yeah, we have no context for this video. We're excited mm. to jump in and see what Space Station Thirteen is. Mm. All right, Seth, let's see what's going on. Yeah. Hey, hey, people, Seth here. Today, I'll be covering a very niche, very infamous, and very autistic game that everyone's asked me to cover since day one. A game where you and many other real, living people with questionable social intelligence roleplay together on the worst space station in the universe, where <laughs> aliens, shapeshifters, and traitors working for rival corporations what? are the least of your concern, where the greatest threat to your own existence are your own crew members. Hungry? Come to the station camp canteen, where the food is definitely poisoned. Injured? Head on down to medical, where half a medication has been relabeled as happy pills. Discouraged? You can try taking a painkiller instead. But it wasn't a painkiller, it was LSD. Having a bad trip? Don't worry, there's a security officer game? nearby to help, but he can't respond because he was murdered and replaced by a genetically modified monkey wearing his uniform. Hallucinating? Keep calm and focus on what's real. Unfortunately for you, the supermassive black hole expanding towards you is not a hallucination. It is, in fact, very real. The emergency shuttle has been called. Welcome to Space Station 13. Space Station 13 has a very simple premise. Everyone has a job. Your objective? Do your best to delay the station's inevitable destruction, either at the hands of antagonists or at the hands of your own incompetent crew. Normally, I give a final score this for a game at the end insane. of a video. Not this time. Space Station 13, 10 out of 10, amazing, spectacular, don't play it. If I'm being perfectly honest with you, Space Station 13 is a fantastic game, but I genuinely don't recommend you play it. Why? Because the engine it's running on is probably older than you, because the interface is a convoluted mess, and only usable because me and every other autistic chimpanzee who plays this game has committed the hotkeys to muscle memory because of the insane time investment and commitment required for you to learn a single role, yeah, and imagine. because, to be perfectly yeah, like, honest, the okay. servers can't handle all of you. At best, we can handle, like, 30 extra players before you grind the servers to a halt. For all these reasons, Space Station 13 wow. always was seems... and always will be a niche title, and maybe that's for the best, but Why? I can offer you something else. I've already just, killed your so hopes and dreams of playing the game, so, so instead, users. let me share some stories of all my wonderful experience with Space Station also, 13. These stories span several I'm years and several clown. different servers, the names of which will forever stay anonymous but because kind of I respect their privacy and because I've it. received threats from some of the more colorful the servers, servers to not mention them well, by name try. or else. What's gonna happen if I don't oh, yeah, comply? Are they gonna hire a Bitcoin assassin to run me over with his mobility scooter? Is he gonna stab me with his insulin pen? I don't know, but between you and me, I hate having come delivered to my mailbox and would prefer to keep it that way. Anyway, I remember the first time picture? playing Space Station very vividly. My friends told me to download it and hop on some shitty server. It had furries <laughs> and erotic roleplay. More on that later. I what? entered around as an assistant. My job to give assistance and to get my hands burnt off trying to hack into places I don't have access to. As I'm screwing around with airlock wires, my friend comes running down the hallway dragging someone's unconscious body. Body. Frantically, he tells Shoot. me, Seth, quick, can you open this door? Sensing the urgency in his voice, I do. He throws the body inside and sprints away. The airlock closes. Three seconds later, something explodes. What the fuck was that? I ask. <laughs> oh yeah, I fed him potassium and water pills. It takes a while to metabolize. My friend had just murdered a man in cold blood by turning his body into a living, ticking potassium bomb. As soon as the man's what? digestive juices cracked through the potassium tablet, it reacted violently 
dude with the water in his stomach and exploded, killing him from inside what out. Is After game? such a horrific what is this homicide, game? I realized, hey, this game's pretty good. <laughs> a few weeks and I'm There's learning a level of detail though for all and stuff ignoring to be able to every happen. single rule of the server. I also ignored every single rule of medicine. I was a surgeon, top of my class, destined to go where no licensed professional oh, gosh, ever has. Also, my friend's girlfriend started playing with us. To put it bluntly, she wasn't very good, but she was very interested in progressing the medical field in any way possible. Cargo had just delivered us some complimentary pizza. As thanks for patching up their boys after they got a little too intimate with a xenomorph's on mining station. Brilliance flashed before my eyes. My pupils widened. I started physically sweating because she said the words I've always dreamt of hearing. Please turn me into a pizza. And so I got to work. Nurse, get me my scalpel, tweezers, protractor, bone what gel, and the rest of the unfinished insanity. pizza. One horrified clown watched yes. in the operating no. theater as I cleanly like hacked off and clown. cauterized her Slash hands and feet. Clown. I opened the pizza box and began attaching no. her new cheesy limbs. Help, oh. sec to surgery, the clown blurted out. He's turning her into a Papa John's. <laughs> the head of medical stormed <laughs> in with a host of security <laughs> officers of to detain me, but they were too late. Her hands and feet had already been replaced. Surprisingly, she could walk just fine on a pair of pizza feet, but her lack of opposable pizza thumbs meant that she couldn't really hold anything, let alone pick them up in the first place. However, her it's pizza happening. hands did make for a convenient and portable source of nutrition. Despite her numerous protests that she consented to the surgery, the head of medical demoted me on the spot Sally. and banned me from ever practicing medicine, claiming that you can't the consent clown. to be there was no appreciation for the oh, arts in this station. So watching. many rounds later, me and my uh -huh. friends found a new purpose, cleaning up the server one erotic furry roleplay at a time. Using telecommunications and metacommunications, I expertly pinpointed areas of high homosexual intent, namely the dorm rooms and the showers. As two Khajiit looking cat men meet privately with one another, they will inevitably start writing words such as, ooh, Mayak has a barred prickly surprise for you, my friend, and, mmm, yes, not me with your thick Tajaran trunk. This is completely unacceptable. Once an act of high homosexual intent is in motion, several of our men would mobilize. As they groan, moan, and spit out hairballs on each other, a security officer would barge in, flashbang the feline fornicators, and tag team baton them into submission before another officer handcuffs them to the bed. On the other side of a contaminated dorm room, our team's atmospheric so technician confused. sets explosive is, I mean, C4 crazy. charges against There's the station so glass. Happening. Quickly, we evacuate evacuate the biohazard exclusion oh, zone and seal the airlocks. Homeo and Juliet barely have enough on? time to recover from the flashbang before the charges detonate, depressurizing the room and sucking their bodies out into the black vacuum of space. Mm. Another job well done. Many explosive decompressions later, erotic roleplay was considered a real occupational hazard. The Tajaran cat boys got creative, started doing group sessions instead, but these were quickly crushed by my friend playing the best roboticist I've ever seen in my life. The airlock doors this to their sodomy so chamber were welded shut to prevent it. interruptions, crazy. so he drilled right Brother through them with a gigantic combat mech. Yeah. The air inside was heavy with a sickly sweet smell of wet fur balls and toxoplasmosis. The furries didn't even have time to react before he started unloading shell <laughs> after shell of so flashbang <laughs> grenades, and thus Man. we all got banned. We paid the price. But to see half a server get flashbang unconscious for 10 minutes straight? Priceless. <laughs> the server didn't last long anyway. The admin's mom shut it down as soon as she saw the electricity bill. So, me and my friends went on to enrich other servers. I even got good at being a chemist. In other words, I always stole the syringe gun at the start of a round and filled it with lethal doses of chloral hydrate. <laughs> for my own protection, of course. I also gave whatever chemical anyone requested, which gives me some moral ambiguity and two degrees of separation for from any pranks or murders that took place as a result of said chemicals. If a clown asks for space lube, he's gonna get space, space lube. Clowns. One time, a clown managed to lube the entire hallway outside of medical, all the way to departures. <laughs> now, departures is usually the place where the escape shuttle docks to get us out of our quickly burning heap of a station. However, if there's no call for a shuttle, departures is completely empty, besides the airlock, which the clown had hacked open. Several people came running through medical 
medical slipped on the space lube and accelerated themselves face first into the no. infinite vacuum of <laughs> no space. What? Security figured out it was the clown and in true security fashion also oh, slipped man. on the space <laughs> lube so with most of the crew <laughs> floating around well, dead know, in I'm, space. I'm, the station had to be evacuated to a later ban from playing clown ever again. Several rounds later, I finally that spawned is. as a traitor. Mission specification Just the critical. dedication to Welcome fuckery to is... And I had no idea what I was doing, but I wanted it, my right? first time to be special. Absolutely. Conveniently, an assistant comes in, bleeding all over, because he was, probably, trying to break into the armory without insulated gloves. His character sprite had maximum melanin and an afro. His roleplay friendly name was Madick. An idiot, <laughs> but a useful idiot. There were no medical staff on hand except me, so I said, hey, I know a little bit of surgery, let me fix you up. I put him under general anesthetic and took out my syndicate PDA. With this, I can discreetly teleport a few traitor items into my inventory to help me achieve my objective, which in this case was murdering the head of security. I ordered two sets of voice-activated explosives, which trigger upon hearing the recorded code phrase. I set this to the word most likely to be spoken by this mentally retarded human being. Can you guess what that is? I surgically opened his ass and inserted the first of the explosives. Then I lodged the second one neatly inside his chest cavity. Closing them up, I took off the anesthetic and began to put my plan in action. It's I would crazy. arm like this simple-minded moron like with illegal weaponry with the hopes right. that security right. would this detain him on possession charges. I gave him all the LSD, all the chloral hydrate syringes, and an entire spray bottle of space lube. I had expertly equipped him to be the <laughs> ultimate nuts. griefing machine. Proud of my work, I gave him a hug and set him loose on the world. But just before he left medical, he turned around and said, Thanks, nigger. <laughs> and we both exploded. My other times playing oh, no. antagonist went you you about just as well. Once I started as the leader of a cult, oh, our objective man. was to seize control of the station and sacrifice our mortal bodies oh, to summon a physical manifestation monster. of our dark god. However, I wasn't very good at it, and neither were my servants. We found a nice, quiet, and most importantly, abandoned bar near the north end of the station, which we began redecorating with our own blood. You see, cultists need to learn a set of ancient words that's randomly generated every round. If you arrange them in the right order, you can perform different spells and rituals what? to advance your goals. What? We what didn't get game? far, because There's the most so dangerous thing to, to an incompetent cult is a single crew member doing their job. The fucking janitor found us. We try to negotiate, convince him that it's okay. actually crayon <laughs> and not blood all over the floor. But that didn't work, so we tried to you murder him instead. Right. That uh, didn't work either. He used his mop to slip us with soapy water and ran off to call security. As you can see, I'm not very proficient at being a traitor. More often, I find myself being abused by traitors. Some of the worst offenders in this regard are definitely wizards, since wizards have a bad tendency to sexually abuse me as well. Not too long ago, me and my friends played a round that was already in progress. As soon as we entered, we realized something was very wrong. An announcement played on the radio. Penis inspection day is in effect. All crew members must report to Doc Johnson for their <laughs> oh mandatory penis inspection. Doc Johnson oh was very God. clearly a wizard. I knew what was coming, and yet I resigned myself to fate and went to medical reception. Doc Johnson was overjoyed to have new patients. He led me to a private room, Ignore asked me if these. I'm circumcised, and told me that I passed the inspection with flying colors. What a surprise, I thought. He's not actually gonna grief me. But I was wrong. As I turned away to leave, he blew off my ass magically. Hey, it's wizardry. I ain't gotta explain shit. Anyway, Doc Johnson is a terrible doctor. He left me bleeding on the floor as he took my ass cheeks and used them as a hat. Highly unprofessional. Would not recommend. A round of Space Station 13 can be very intense. What? At other times, it can be very slow paced and almost relaxing. If you're not a traitor and you don't have anything urgent to handle, you can always just roleplay and get comfy mechanic. in the bar while the piano <laughs> plays anime songs and the jukebox insane. plays whatever deep fried ASMR bullshit people keep putting on. It's a very wholesome experience and it helps you get emotionally invested with the other members of your crew, which are often nice people. However, security is often staffed by egotistical megalomaniacs acting out their most depraved power fantasies. They are often not nice people. As a result of their inherent propensity to be insane sociopaths, the rest of the crew will often rebel against their tyranny. In one such case, Cargo had declared independence 
independence, security refused to recognize the independent station state of Cargonia. So they tried to barge their way in and arrest everyone involved, including me. But security was unprepared for the trap we had in store. One officer rushed into Cargo Bay and slipped on a banana peel straight into the conveyor belt waiting for him. He tried repeatedly to get back up, only to be tripped again by an ocean of banana peels on the conveyor belt, which looped around in a circle. Surrounding that circle was another circle, composed entirely of vending machines. The officer was also being brutally assaulted by several hundred cans of soda. The vending machines were hacked, and as a result, they would continuously fire drinks at whoever is in the area. Each officer that slipped into the banana belt got smashed unconscious by a relentless stream of discount Dan soda. Trademark, all rights reserved. After extensive head trauma by our soda turrets, security reluctantly accepted Cargonia's independence and their right to bear arms. If there's one department that has more revolutions than cargo, it would have to be science, and it's easy to understand why. We spend our lives researching a way for the good of a station, which does of course carry its own share of risks and hazards. Sometimes, accidents happen. Sooner or later, some bored and mentally challenged assistant will try and put a bag of holding into another bag of holding, and security can't always comprehend that we're not directly responsible for the resulting black hole eating through the kitchen. This lack of appreciation for the scientific profession usually ends with arrest warrants for the whole department, which is usually answered back with the words, I'd like to see you try. But when we're not having a nuclear arms race with security, R&D is actually quite a chill department. I also made a great discovery last time I, I played there. The Me and another scientist were messing around with blueprints and eventually made ourselves a pneumatic cannon. Normally, so these are used to launch whatever but, uh, items you have inside. What we didn't know was so that it could launch food love. as well. I loaded a lasagna, aimed for the mouth, and fired it at my fellow researcher. The lasagna disappeared. What the hell? That's amazing, oh, that's he said. We good. just realized what happened. I had just managed to remotely force feed my fellow man. But what do we do with this forbidden knowledge? Nothing good, that's for sure. My comrade got to work asking chemistry for hallucinogenic drugs. They said no. So we built our own chemistry dispensers, filled up the beakers with happy juice, and ran straight to the kitchen. We injected all the donuts and hot pockets we could find with as much LSD and mind breaker oh, no. toxin as they could hold. Then we oh, loaded them no. into our food delivery system and started firing off at everyone in the hallways. The food <laughs> was instantly delivered. The crew was instantly satisfied. Several people, including security officers, managed to see the two small lines of text indicating that they've just been fed something. They <laughs> thought it was extremely clever and said they didn't know the pneumatic cannon could do that. Since it was just a bit of harmless fun, we got off scot-free. Minutes later, the hallucination started. Crew members started screaming on the radio. Some were puking, shaking, or convulsing on the ground. Medical couldn't keep up with the bodies. They piled on too quick, and most of the doctors were too busy fighting off non-existent entities to do anything about it. The chemist, who originally refused to give us LSD, was arrested by security on suspicion of intentional food poisoning. It was complete pandemonium, and I think it illustrates perfectly oh, the chaos, chaos that is Space mischief. Station 13. Oh, what fun this <laughs> That's all I have for you today, folks. There is, of course, more stories to tell, but we'd literally be here for hours. Space Station 13, a marvelous, unique, and incredibly shitty game. 10 out of 10, don't play it. Because if you do, they're gonna blame it on me. And I hate having come in my mailbox. As always, more content to come, so stay tuned. On other news, I started a Subscribestar account. So if you'd like to invest and don't want to give your money to Patreon, now you can. A warm thanks to the many members of the Merchants Guild, generously funding and bankrolling these videos. You're all truly wonderful. Have a good one. Black holes and people, LSD and I, well, shooting people without airlocks. Like, it's all like, I feel like keeping track of all the things you can do, all the things, like, it's just, it's essentially a big puzzle, and then you can find ways to break it, and it's really cool. But it seems like the game is finding the most creative way to break it. Yeah. I mean, it kind of um, reminds me of, like... And, and not that I've really played on public Minecraft servers. I just know that, like, there are I'll some that just you. get nuked and are destroyed and you hardly can even traverse the map. This kind of reminds <laughs> me of that, of just people getting on and going, like, 
Hmm. How can I ruin this for everybody else <laughs> and have a blast doing it? And it's, man, that's crazy. My question is, like, what are the boundaries of this game? Like, to me, they were not at all defined in watching that video. Like, the, the amount of stuff that you could do in this game and the amount of stuff that you can concoct in your head to try and then go do is just ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> ridiculous it's it's like playing fan fiction or something like that yeah like live yeah it's, um yeah that's just very cool sandbox that you can jump in to see like what are these rules and how can i mess with them yeah like how how would you how would you describe that game to somebody else how would you in the in the comments describe space station 13 in one sentence or less i i yeah, and let us know if you've played this game. I mean, it seems really <laughs> fun, but let us know, like, what is the craziest mm. thing that you've done or have had happen while you were playing Space Station 13? We'd love to know that in the comment sections down below because I imagine you all have some crazy stories. Yeah. And also, like, how did you, if, if you do play the game, how did you find out about it? Was it through Seth that you found out about the game? Was it through someone else? Like... Yeah. To, to me, I've never even heard of this, and this, I think, blew us both away here, yeah. um, to say the least. Um, but yeah, thanks so much, guys, for watching. Um, and uh, we, we definitely enjoy watching some new content every now and then. Yeah. Um, if you liked our reaction and liked watching the video with us, we've reacted to quite a bit of other stuff as well, um, ranging from some Team Fortress 2 videos recently to Warcraft to Warhammer 40K. Um, so there's plenty of stuff on the channel um, to check out if you, if you, if you like us. Um, and uh, yeah, I think... We'll, uh, we'll see you guys next time, hopefully, regardless. Um, and, yeah. Yeah. See you next time.